hello, welcome. Um, welcome to a live demo today. I am going to be demoing four science projects that involve exploring our sense of sound. Um, this is a really, uh, these are some really fun projects and they're really simple. And so that's why I wanted to demo them for you guys today. So um, I love science on my blog. You probably know that if you follow along with me. And these were sort of magical, um, especially for my son. He is, he's loves all things music. So once we started playing around with some of these science experiments, he was all in. Um, so I am excited to share them with you today. Now I want to really pre I want to preface this uh, briefly by letting you guys know that. The, the projects in today's, or the science experiments in today's video are based on my sponsors, um, projects that they have as part of a kit that they provide. So I've been working with AWIM, uh, which is, which stands for A World in Motion, um, for, on four different projects this year. And they are a wonderful collaborator. So typically, uh, it's SAE International's AWIM program. They typically provide resources for educators in the classroom. But as we have been in the pandemic, uh, they have been very kind and have decided to make a lot of their resources available for people like us at home, um, especially as we're not getting necessarily all of the extras that we used to get when we were all when our kids were in school all the time. Um, so it's been great. They've been making a lot of modules that they've put up online. They've been doing, um, they've provided a lot of their uh, projects via, you know, bloggers like myself who are bringing them to you guys, um, as well as a STEM at home page that they've created just for you. So I'm going to put a whole bunch of links in the description below. Uh, after this demo, so you can check out what they have to offer. I highly recommend you go go look at it because there's a lot of cool resources there. They're also hosting, well, they're providing me with one of their classroom kits to give away to you guys. So um, at, there will also be a link in the description below to our uh, giveaway. And it's a really cool giveaway. It's, it's, a, it's a really extensive kit. So I hope that you will enter that. But enough of me, enough of me talking, let's get to the science. Okay, so I'm going to turn my camera around and we are going to check this out. So let me do this. This is always my tricky part here when I turn this. So give me a second as I turn my camera. There we go. Not as bad as I've had in the past. Sometimes it's hard to turn that camera around. Okay, cool. Let me get this adjusted for you guys. All right, as I said, we are gonna be, I'm gonna be demoing four sound science experiments. Um, and let me back up really quick and just say that these are, like I said, part of one of AWIM's kits. The kit that we are, these, these experiments are taken from is called Making Music. So let me start with the first experiment. Now, one of the things in the kits that AWIM provides is the, are tuning forks. So they provide a set of these awesome tuning forks. Um, you will need these for today's project. If you don't have them, that's okay. Um, they're actually really inexpensive online. I, I looked into it. They're, you know, under $10 to get one of these and they're really cool. You can use them for a lot of different science projects. So it's worth investing in them if you'd like. Um, let me just show you before we get started how you hit a tuning fork. You want to kind of hold it, the end of it like this lightly between your fingers. Then you want to take a rubber mallet and then you're going to hit it about one third of the way from the tip. Okay, so you can't see it, but this thing is vibrating really fast. If you put it up to your skin, it feels really weird. <laughs> so, um, it's pretty cool. This is what my son loved, and we're gonna use this for the first two science experiments, okay? The first experiment is called, how does sound move? And what we are exploring is how sound moves. So sound moves in waves. Uh, I think you probably know that, but what you you might not realize is that, well, you, you can't see sound, right? Um, but we can, we can actually see it. And this is what I'm gonna show you in this project. So you can't see it because typically sound moves through the air and the waves are moving through the air and they're invisible. But if you change the medium 
from which they're moving, you can actually see them. So I am filling a bowl right now with water. I'm gonna turn, on my, turn my light up a little bit. Okay. Okay, so I filled a bowl with water. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the tuning fork and instead of listening to the wave and as it mo moving through air, I'm gonna dip it into the water and you're gonna see what happens as the, the sound vibrations, the sound waves move from the air and into the water, okay? So what they do is they actually spray the water everywhere. I should have had a tray for this. <laughs> Last time I did it, I got water everywhere. Pretty cool, right? And if you look really closely, it's hard to see where um, from my camera angle right now, you can actually see the surface of the water moving in waves. Wait, let me do that again. So that's what's happening. The sound waves are moving from the tuning fork into the water and it's causing it to splash everywhere. So this is a fun one to do. And these are all very simple, as I said. So let's move on to our second one. This one mimics, it's called, there's a drum in my ear and this mimics how our, um, our eardrums work. I'm gonna see if I can turn my lights up a little bit here. Well, this is gonna get here. So take a bowl for this sound experiment and cover it with plastic wrap, okay? And we want to cover it tightly. I'm using the press and seal, so it's pretty tight on here, but if you can't get it tight, take a rubber band and put it around the edges. There we go. Okay, now, we're gonna sprinkle a little bit of rice on the top of our bowl. Okay, so this kind of mimics how an eardrum works. Let me show you what's happening and then I'm gonna show you a little diagram of an eardrum. So again, I'm gonna hit this tuning fork and I'm gonna lower it. So as I hit it, again, those sound waves, the sound waves are moving out and vibrating this met plastic membrane. And that, those vibrations cause all the rice to move. It's pretty cool. I'm gonna put it in the middle so you can see here. I love this. <laughs> they also make a really cool sound, by the way, just incidentally on styrofoam. Just gonna share that. Almost like an instrument. Um, but back to this experiment, this is really similar to how our ears work. So in our ears, we have the outer ear, then we have an ear canal, then there's an eardrum. And we've basically built an eardrum right here. So an eardrum is a, is a membrane that hears sound and vibrates. And as it vibrates, it, there's, it moves bones in our inner ear that then sends signals to our brain and interpret those sounds that we're hearing. So what we've done here is recreate the idea of an eardrum and how it works. That is sound hitting the membrane and vibrating. These are like the, what the bones are doing, right? They're vibrating and if this was our ear, it would be sending, eventually be sending signals to our brain to interpret what is going on. Okay, that is our second experiment. Now let's do our third. Okay, this one is called Stringing It Along. And this is, we're gonna learn a really quick about pitch and frequency. So frequency is the number of times per second that sound waves repeat. Okay, and pitch is how we describe our ears response to frequency. So typically, we would say something like this is a lower pitch than something like this at the top of the scale. So just had to do that. So this is a xylophone and you can see that the longer the rods or the planks are, the lower the sound, the lower the pitch. Okay, now we're gonna mimic that idea with rubber bands and a geo board. And if you don't have a geo board, that's okay. I'm gonna show you 
a second option for doing this in just a minute that doesn't require a, having a geoboard handy. But we're going to take rubber bands and a geoboard and we're going to explore that same idea. So we're going to stretch our rubber bands on the geoboard and we're going to make sure that the, the sides of the shape that we create are different lengths, okay? Because as you just saw really quick, the longer the length, the lower the pitch, okay? So if this is correct, then this is gonna be, I'll bring this a little closer, a lower sound than this one, which is a shorter rubber band. Whoops, it's a hard to, here we go. So you can see that the shorter the side, the higher the pitch, and the longer the side, the lower the pitch. Um, you can also do this with plastic cups, okay? Um, if you're doing plastic cups, you're gonna need three rubber bands of different sizes because these cups are the same size. And so what we're gonna do instead of uh, making a side longer, we're gonna play with the tightness of the rubber band, okay? So in this one, I've got a short rubber band. I'm pulling it across here, so it's really stretched tight across the cup. And I've got a medium one here, and I've got a longer one here. So we'll see the difference in pitch based on the tightness. That's a lot lower than this one. And then this one, which is stretched the tightest, should be the highest pitch. And it is. So that's a really another simple way to describe pitch and have kids experiment um, at home with what type, what factors affect pitch, right? It's the length or the tightness of the rubber band that affects how high or low that pitch is. Okay, so let's go on to our last sound experiment, which is my favorite. For this project, you're going to need a styrofoam cup, move this out of the way, and a slinky. So a couple of these, you see that I'm using some, I don't wanna say specialty materials, but things that not everyone always has on hand. In the giveaway that I'm doing, there are slinkies, there are geo boards. It's all part of the kit that AWIM is giving away. So um, that's another way if you don't have these things at home, you can enter the giveaway and one of you guys is going to win one of these kits. Okay, so if you have a slinky and you pull it apart, you'll see already that it makes a, makes a fun sound, right? Kind of a weird sound. Um, in this project, what we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be exploring amplification. So this is called Make It Louder. Now, sound is amplified or made louder in a couple different ways. Um, one of the ways is to basically con compress the sound into a narrow passageway. Okay, I'm gonna come back to my little ear diagram. That's how our ears work. The sound comes in and is really, it comes down here and it's compressed when it hits our eardrum. So it's funneled down. Another way to amplify sound is to uh, use a material that vibrates well. And styrofoam vibrates super well. So it's a great material to use. So basically we're getting the best of both worlds for amplification here. We're narrowing the sound. We're gonna narrow it into the cup. And then we're using a material that vibrates really well. Okay, so this is like, I feel like I'm cheating because this project is so simple. You literally take a cup, you, you have your slinky, you stick the cup on the end of the slinky or the end of the cup on the slinky, right, right that, like that. And let's not listen to the cup. Like I said before, you hear the slinky moving. But now, see if you can hear this. This cup is greatly amplifying the sound. Let's try it without the cup so you guys can really see. I'll do the same thing and you see if you hear it. Whoops. So you hear the sound, but it's not the same as when I do that same motion, but it's going, it's being channeling through the cup.
I feel like this sounds like laser beams. <laughs> um, it's very, very cool. Okay, so that is my fourth simple science experiment for you guys. Um, and if you do this and you head to the post that I wrote about it, what we end up doing after we learn about science, the science of sound, is we design some instruments using some of these concepts. Um, and we design instruments out of like really simple materials, okay? So that's where we take it after this. Um, but the so sound science experiments are fun in and of themselves, which is why I really wanted to share them with you. Now, I'm gonna turn my camera around just a second, but I wanna also let you guys know about this giveaway. Um, oh, this is a big box, so I'm gonna see if I can. So as part of the giveaway, like I mentioned, this is basically half. <laughs> Half of the box that my sponsor AWIM is giving away as part of um, as part of the giveaway. Let me turn this around. Okay, here we are. Included in the box are, like I said, sound um, tuning forks. There's sound meters. There's all the materials that you would need to do the science projects that I just did, um, as well as a lot of uh, parts and materials to build the instruments. So this kit is typically designed for a classroom, but if you guys have, so I was thinking that educators, this is perfect for you, uh, enter the giveaway and if you win, this this has enough materials for like 24 kids. Age range is, you know, earlier elementary and up. So um, I would say like first, second, third, fourth in that range. Um, and then if you are a parent and you win, you can either consider gifting this to your teacher or your school. They will love you. Or you can, if you have multiple kids, this would be great because you'd have plenty of materials for all of your kids. So again, I'm putting the link to the giveaway in the description below. It is going on right now and it ends on Wednesday at midnight. So enter today, tomorrow, or Wednesday. Um, and you, you could win this. It's really cool. Anyways, that's it for today, you guys. I just wanted to share those simple science, sound science experiments. Every time I say that, I feel like I'm doing a uh, <laughs> tongue twister. Um, but these are a lot of fun. And, and the science fair is coming up, just want to say. So if that is, you know, these are, these could be really fun experiments uh, for kids on the younger side who want to explore sound or who love music and want to use that as the uh, jumping off point for their um, science fair project. All right, that's it today. I hope you are well, and I will see you guys again soon. Bye-bye.